This official Newcastle United video is brought to you in association with Newcastle Breweries. Proud to be the club's main sponsor. The end of a memorable season for Newcastle United, one of the best in more than 100 years of football. Kevin Keegan had inspired his team to a thrilling return to the highest level. Newcastle finished third in the Premiership. No silver on the sideboard, but so much reward from the sound of thunderous applause. Some teams won more matches, but nobody won more friends. Newcastle had a brilliant new image, the entertainers. Now angle it in. successful or a failure is going to play that way and uh, I think we've proved now two years on the trot that you can go out and play what I call real attractive football and be successful. Seldom can Newcastle United have kicked off a season with hopes and expectations so high. Every United fan believed the club was on the brink of a whole new era. Kevin Keegan had led United to the first division title and the new FA Premiership was the fresh challenge. The magnificent new Leeser's end was the perfect backdrop for the opening match for the big time field against Tottenham Hotspur, ironically now managed by Ozzy Ardiles, Newcastle's former manager. The stage was set for a memorable occasion, except that Spurs refused to play along. Teddy Sheringham came up with a high class finish for the only goal of the game after 36 minutes. United fans were down to earth with a big bump, and it was Sheringham who took the bow, and Ozzy Ardiles who took the points. Four days later, United went to Coventry for a match that produced controversy, drama, but ultimately still no points for Kevin Keegan's side. This is Liam O'Brien, sort of distance, deflection, goal! Peter Atherton got the touch, O'Brien gets the goal. Beresford, oh he's left that short, Wegerly, Cernicek's brought him down and that could be big trouble. Cernicek, the red card, Newcastle will bring on Tommy Wright. Quinn against Wright, oh he's made a complete hash of it against his old club. Unlove in the middle, he's opened up the space, good goal, 1-1, Peter Unlove. Harford's on the far post, Mick Harford, 2-1 to Coventry, Mick Harford sinks his old club. Two games, two defeats, and now Newcastle entered the cauldron of Old Trafford. Premier League champions Manchester United were as tough a test as you can get, but the big match atmosphere and footballing opposition of the very highest quality brought the best out of Newcastle, and the Toon Army loved it. Taken on by Keane. The Hughes, Robson coming through. There was a nudge there as he made one of those typical Robson bursts from midfield. Papa Vasilio, I think, the guilty man. Just on the edge of the box and a free kick in a dangerous position. Cernicek checking the organisation ahead of him. Plenty of options there. It's going to be Giggs. What a goal from Ryan Giggs. Five minutes to go to half-time, and Giggs, Sernicek got a hand to it, but there was nothing he could do. Venison forward. 
Clark picks it up, a little bit of room to operate in here. Watson getting much out of Pallister. Now O'Brien. And Andy Cole back in the groove again. Superb first time ball for him. And he wasted no time either. And Schmeichel was left. The flags were getting more impressive, and so too was Newcastle's form. Summer signing Malcolm Allen was starting to prove his worth. And back in front of their own fans, United had the chance for a first Premiership win, and the opposition were Everton. Ball into space for Lee Clark. Clark moving forward dangerously. And Allen, and it's there. It's a goal for Newcastle, and it's Malcolm Allen's first for United. For too many years, Newcastle and Blackburn might have seemed like dinosaurs in the modern game. But two great Liverpool number sevens had inspired a glorious transformation. Keegan at Newcastle and his Anfield successor Kenny Dalglish at Rovers. Kevin against Kenny was bound to be tight. Beresford. And Beresford getting the return. Cole does it again. 1-0 to Newcastle, Andy Cole, that's what they think about it. Beresford laying it on for him, he adjusted and he hit it, and May's challenge came just too late. Class stuff there from Andy Cole. And Sherwood, through the middle, for Shearer, here's Alan Shearer, Shearer! What a return for Alan Shearer. 1 1. Shearer as though he'd never been away. Venison trying to get there, but Shearer finishing so coolly. Keegan would have been disappointed at only a share of the points with big spending Blackburn. That was a typical reaction from a man who's never been prepared to settle for second best. Most promoted managers are usually content to survive in their first season, but not Keegan. Someone at the club mentioned, or someone in the press mentioned, consolidation. Uh, so we banned that word straight away. Um, I didn't feel that uh, it would be right to put that into the players' minds, or the staff's minds, or the supporters' minds, really. You know, because since we've we've, we've come here as, as a team, and Terry, myself, Derek Fazakli, and all the staff, we've we've always said the opposite. We've always said, hey, why shouldn't we win the First Division Championship? Why shouldn't we say we want to get in the Premier League? And of course, that is what we've instilled in the players. And then to talk about consolidation, it, to me, it just, it just gives people an excuse. Pre-season, the build-up to, to the season, I think all the fans after Euphoria last season thought we were going to actually win the league. And I think possibly the players got roped in that a little bit. Um, and then we got a, a big shot against Tottenham. And that was possibly the best thing that's happened to us. We got a bit of a fright, brought us right back down to earth. And from that game, we possibly would have thought we'd finish you know, 12th or 13th, consolidate and be quite happy with that. If the football was starting to flow, the results were still hard to come by. A hectic two games a week schedule continued at Ipswich. It was to prove another example of winning more admirers than points. Watson looking to make up ground. Clark takes over. Gets the return and the space opening up here. Cole wants it. Cole gets it. And Cole scores. A minute and a half after the break, Andy Cole, three and four games now. Clark played his part as well, picking up the ball there. And the return, always aware that Cole would be running, and after that, it was a formality. Andy Cole again. Venison backpedalling. Still Ipswich coming forward, good tackle, Kiwomia, 1-1, Chris Kiwomia. Chris Waddle had been a Newcastle star when Keegan, the player, inspired United to promotion. Now the former Tower or forward was wearing a Sheffield Wednesday shirt. Waddle knew how the good times could roll on Tyneside, but this time he was to be on the receiving end. Through there to Malcolm Allen, whips in the shot. And Cole finishes it off. Andy Cole for 1 0. Allen shot. Woods couldn't hold on. Cole was there. 
and that was a goal for Newcastle. Allen wasted no time with the shot, and Cole wasted absolutely nothing. This model of getting possession back, and Sheridan now. Sinton, that's the equaliser, and it's Newcastle born Andy Sinton. Shearer in the last home game who came home and now it's Sinton who makes the great return neatly placed as well this model relishing the occasion by the looks of it and getting the return here Waddle just walking past his man and Sinton 2-1 Sinton again two minutes into the second half and Waddle, that was so nonchalant, and the cross was perfect, and Sinton met it, and 2-1 Wednesday. And Alex Matthew from Morton will get his first taste of first-team action, just under half an hour left for him. Dennis is bringing the ball out of defence. This is Matthew. Matthew... Still gets some sort of a ball in, and again, and Maffey, and down for Cole, and he scored! Andy Cole, the equaliser. Keegan off the bench. Cole comes up trumps again, but what about Maffey's part? Maffey got it back again, Lee was there to pull it down, and Cole turned and hit the target once again. Maffey... That was the really telling ball in. Lee down for Cole. Woods going the wrong way. Allen for Maffey. Oh, my word, what a goal from Alex Maffey on his debut. A sensational goal. 3-2, Keegan just looks skywards. And Alex Maffey, what an arrival. Malcolm Allen with the ball forward and Matthew with a great run and an astonishing finish. Matthew will certainly not forget his Newcastle debut and nor will the fans. A tremendous goal. What a night there, Abby. Still Newcastle coming forward and Allen. 4-2. It's Malcolm Allen now. Maffey celebrates as well. Woods in despair. And it's all going Newcastle's way now. Allen getting in where it hurts. His second of the season, 4-2. All United's impressive football had so far been played without key summer signing Peter Beardsley. He'd been literally elbowed out of the start of the season by Liverpool's Neil Ruddock in a so-called friendly. A fractured cheekbone ruled out Beardsley's second coming until mid-September at Swindon. The former England star's return looked to be going to plan when Lee Clark put United ahead after 37 minutes. The team's first away win seemed even more on the cards when John Moncur brought down Robert Lee in the penalty area. Malcolm Allen was in just the right mood to make no mistake from the spot. But Swindon had been the only team United failed to beat when they were promoted together the previous season. Martin Ling started the town's revival, and a couple of minutes later, Swindon had once again proved a thorn in Newcastle's side. Andy Much coming up with the header to make it 2-2. Swindon had turned the game upside down. After six games unbeaten, Newcastle must have expected little trouble from 1st Division Notts County in the second round of the Coca-Cola Cup. But 16 minutes into the first leg, Pavel Cernacek fumbled an indirect free kick from Mark Draper. County were ahead, but the goal brought devastating reprisals. The lead nipped in, and they're exposed, and surely... Andy Cole again. And now Beresford might unleash one and parry it again. And Andy 
goal, picks up the pieces. Beardsley, a lovely first time in touch there for Robert Lee. Cole is in the middle, Cole, here goes Andy Cole, the hat-trick for Andy Cole. Bracewell, Cole was there, and Lee turning, and Bracewell, and Clark, and Bracewell, still Bracewell. Number four, Paul Bracewell this time. A comprehensive victory against first division opposition showed how far Newcastle had progressed. The team was taking the transition to the higher level in its stride. It all reflected on the men guiding United, and not just Kevin Keegan. His irrepressible assistant Terry McDermott had been a surprise appointment when Keegan first arrived, but yet again the manager's judgment had been spot on. It brought me here for hopefully to bring a smile around the club and I'd like to think we've achieved that. We're, we're, we're a great club now, we've still got a little bit to go. But um, it is a happy club. We've tried to make it that way. Um, we, we give a lot, the players a lot of freedom, and they enjoy coming to training. And that's all down to obviously the staff and and Derek Fazakli in particular because he does put a good training session on for them, and they enjoy coming in. Coach Fazakli was part of Ozzy Ardiles' backroom team, but the new manager quickly recognised the big man's contribution. Faz takes charge of the day-to-day -day routine and leaves the limelight to others. I've accepted long ago that when you're working with uh, two high-profile people like uh, Kevin and Terry, that uh, and obviously with the past association with the club being here before, then that's the way it will be. Um, I was never the sort of player who wanted to hog the headlines. I was quite content to uh, get on and do the job, and I've just continued to think that way um, on the coaching side, really. Andy Cole's cup hat-trick had made it eight goals in seven games for United's record signing. Another new arrival came from Keegan's old club, Liverpool, to bolster the defence. Goalkeeper Mike Hooper made his debut against West Ham, but it was always going to be tough to grab the headlines away from young King Cole. Clark for Allen. Allen around his man well. Kenny Brown left for dead there. And for Cole, he's got it again. Andy Cole. It's the ninth of the season. Bang into the middle there, Cole, one touch, bang, 1-0. Beardsley, and for Lee, and somehow managed to keep it moving forward and found Lee Clark, the great ball, Andy Cole. Now it's Cole on goal again. Everyone a winner from Andy Cole. Another superb piece of finishing. A great run, perfect service, and Cole... There was no stopping United at Villa Park, and this result made the Premiership sit up and take notice. Unbeaten since those opening two defeats, Aston Villa were the next victims. That's straight to Robert Lee. Lee ready to attack the defence. Penalty! Steve Staunton the foul. Penalty! Spink against Malcolm Allen. No problem. Malcolm Allen for 1-0, that's his fourth of the season, and confidently struck as well. Lee, great ball forward for Beardsley on a run, Cole square of him, Andy Cole, stopped by Spink, Cole, surely you don't give him two chances. 2-0. Newcastle on their way to their first away win, thanks to Cole. The second leg of Newcastle's Coca-Cola Cup tie against Notts County could have been a stroll. 4-1 up already, but United decided to turn on the start.
Within 24 hours, more celebrations. Kevin Keegan ended weeks of growing speculation linking him with the England manager's job. The man who'd inspired United's revival signed a three-year contract with the club. And Sir John Hall had pulled off another coup. If an England cap was surely a matter of time for Andy Cole, then QPR striker Les Ferdinand was a major rival for an international shirt. When the two met at club level, comparisons were inevitable. It took... Keegan must have been hoping that his team's form would soar again when he returned to one of his old clubs, Southampton. The Saints had been struggling, but one man lifted... You, Letizia! Now, Matthew. Matthew with a good cross of Cole. Cole, the equaliser. Goal number 15 for Andy Cole. But Letizia's two glorious goals still couldn't dominate the headlines. The real talking point had come when the manager decided to substitute Lee Clark and the region's footballer of last year reacted petulantly. Clark was about to learn that you don't have a public tantrum at Kevin Keegan's club. He was hauled back to the bench and later was very nearly kicked out of the club. Clark was mortified by his own behaviour. For Kevin Keegan, the nightmare was only beginning. When United came out at Selhurst Park to face Wimbledon in the third round of the Coca-Cola Cup, Clark was in the reserves, but now it was his best friend Andy Cole who was missing. United star striker had sensationally walked out. The fans wouldn't find out until after the game, but his absence was so obvious. The whole night was a disaster. Peter Beardsley's missed kick led to Warren Barton giving the Dons a 23rd minute lead. It looked as though it might have been just a temporary setback when Scott Sellers equalised five minutes later, his first goal of the season. The Joe Canares team are the men everyone hates to play and the fans' worst fears were realised with just over 20 minutes left. Dean Holdsworth got the last touch on a messy goal and one chance of silverware was already over for the season. Keegan had to act quickly to sort out a growing crisis. By Friday, the differences were publicly settled. Clark wouldn't be transferred, and Cole, who was homesick, would be given more support by the club. But there was only one real way to show the most difficult week of Keegan's managership had been dealt with successfully. And that was on the pitch on Saturday. Ironically, it was Wimbledon again, this time at St. James's Park. With 10 minutes to go in the first half, Vinnie Jones brought down Robert Lee in the box. The referee decided it was a penalty and Newcastle's recovery was about to be completed. It's here with the penalty. No problem at all. Peter Beardsley puts Newcastle ahead. His first league goal since his return from the penalty spot. No bother. Bracewell. Cole's header through to Lee Clark. Lee Clark still going. Clark. Sigurds. Cole. It's another one for Andy Cole. The problems are all behind him now. And Andy Cole gets another one for Newcastle. Lee Clark. The first effort, Segers didn't gather it, and Cole was in there and poached it. The two lads together there, great friends, who've had a difficult week, but have brought it to the right conclusion, Andy Cole. This is a well-rehearsed kick, one suspects, coming up here. Sellers for Beardsley. Brilliant from Peter Beardsley. What a superb goal. That free kick worked absolutely to perfection. And look at the joy there. All the training, all the preparation, all the practice. Well worth it when it comes off like that. It worked like clockwork. Peter Beardsley smashes in his second of the game. Check back, driven all the way across the Sellers. Lovely little lay down there for Andy Cole. Sellers still moving forward, first time. 
Watson on the far post running it back. Robert Lee, Lee for Clark. Bracewell, first time for Cole. Oh, that was beautifully done. Peter Beardsley's hat trick. Absolutely superb finishing. You can't learn that sort of composure, you know. Cole there, the first effort. Beardsley, you just chipped it over the keeper, tall as you like. Newcastle 4, Wimbledon 0. And Peter Beardsley is back to his very best in a Newcastle shirt. Kevin Keegan had come through the most testing spell in his short managerial career with flying colours. At times it was hard to remember that Keegan had no experience of running a football club before his return to Tyneside. It was Sir John Hall who took that historic gamble to launch the superstar into management and now he's come to know Keegan at first hand. Very likeable, he always puts himself out and uh, as I say, it's a tremendous chap. He's a people person, as I said before, and uh, he's a winner, an absolute winner, which is great for Newcastle United. Come up there, come, come up, up, come, come up. up, come up, come up. We run the club like I think a modern day club's got to be run. Um, the players have a big say in it. We have a committee of four, as you know, who we meet with regular. Um, the players get a fair amount of freedom here to express themselves. Of course, if that freedom's ever abused, then, uh, you know, the discipline usually is more severe than at other clubs because the actual shock of it and the disappointment is greater. The one overriding thing I think he makes us realise uh, about the supporters, you know, how important they are to the club's success and how, how much they enjoy it as much as the lads do. I mean, we, we open ourselves up to the community now a lot more than we used to, and that's down to him. It's his policy and the chairman's policy, and the lads are enjoying it. Ooh, look at this gold pen too. Hey? Everybody's got that much respect for him. From what he's done as a player, and, uh, as a player, and now as a manager, I mean, everybody just respects him so much that uh, you're just motivated to just being there. He was a god as a player, yeah, and uh, he's come back and done done the same as a manager, really. And uh, I think he was the only person who could have came here and done it. He's, uh, it's just everything he does. He just drills enthusiasm in all the players and excitement into the into the whole area, and I think it's caught on. I think the players know me now. They know what they can get away with. They know it's got to be funnier. It's going to be a, a, a club where they want to enjoy coming through the gates, have a laugh, do the work, but don't step out of line because um, it can't be tolerated. Terrible example for the younger players. The two Army were ready for more hair-raising action when a totally revitalised Newcastle moved on to Boundary Park for a televised match against Oldham. Now, Oldham on a Monday night might not be everyone's idea of a good trip. And when United went a goal down, the fans must have wondered why they made the journey. But Richard Jobson's 35th minute effort was against the run of play, and Newcastle's second half response was quite devastating. Knocking that one forward. On for Cole. Cole away now. Cole. Cole, an outrageous goal. What a shot, and Keegan on his feet. Two defenders ahead of him, and he just turned them over the keeper into the back of the net. Instinct, pure instinct. He had no right to find the target from that angle. He must have eyes at the top of his head. Sellers, long ball forward. Beardsley's away now. Beardsley. Loves to run at defences from these positions. Beardsley, Beardsley, tremendous. Beardsley, what a goal. And they're having a field day. Keegan acknowledges the genius of Peter Beardsley. Great running first. Defenders all over the shot. And look at that. What a finish from Beardsley. His balance is superb. And my word, he packs a wallop. Look at that. Sellers. In for Cole. Defenders piling into him. Andy Cole. And Cole gets another one. How does he do it? 
Key can't believe he found a way through them. There were plenty of defenders there to do the job. He refused to go down when he gets a sight of goal. Cole just had to get his shot in. Style was the byword at Newcastle these days. The stunning new Leeser's End was officially opened and named the Sir John Hall Stand. Kevin Keegan and Terry McDermott's old club Liverpool provided the perfect, if chilly, christening. Graham Souness was finding the Merseysiders' winning habit a hard one to sustain. But Anfield was Keegan's inspiration. The lessons had been learned to perfection. Now Robert Lee away. Cole is in the middle. Cole! 1-0! Andy Cole, on a freezing afternoon, it's Liverpool caught Cole. Robert R. Beaton, what a start for Newcastle. Robert Lee, the provider, and Cole stretched out and turned it in. Cole just holding up to keep himself on side and stretching out. Cole by a stud. Beardsley, a yard or two to operate here. Beardsley through for time. It's Sellers the provider. And Newcastle have Liverpool all over the place. Sellers, where was the marking? But there was Cole, and there was another goal. Beardsley, tremendous pass again, right through that gap. And Sellers had the space, and Sellers had the control. Over it came, and Cole again, 2-0. Elliot once again. Old club, Newcastle absolutely dominant. And Andy Cole, well, look at that ball from Lee, and Sellers again. He's devastated down the left, they can't give him that sort of space. First time, Cole is there. Thank you very much, Grobar, Desperation Stakes. Newcastle were now in such a rich seam of form that all the snow clearing needed to get the Sheffield United game underway was worth the effort. United were ahead after only nine minutes. Peter Beardsley, the provider, and Scott Sellers credited with the vital touch, a claim he later lost after an appeal. From then on, Newcastle's case was proved beyond any doubt. Sellers. That's wide for Elliott. Oh, what a good run by Sellers and a good ball by Elliott. That's a penalty. No doubt about that one. Peter Beardsley, the penalty taker. So easy for Beardsley. 2-0 Newcastle, 12 minutes gone, they're in total charge. Cole beat in the air there. Up and under, Hooper's come out. First time, good volley. Oh, all the way through as well to Beardsley. Now, what can Beardsley create here? Beardsley sprinting at them, through for Cole. go again though this is Sellers and Beardsley in the middle there and Cole and Beardsley it had to be it's four now and Peter Beardsley another expert finish four straight wins had the Magpie fans buzzing but recent news meant a great footballing future was already guaranteed for Tyneside the cream of Europe was on its way the new look St. James's Park had won the FA's vote to be a host ground for the 1996 European Championships. England's biggest sporting event for 30 years was heading to Newcastle. I think the European Championships is a great boost for the city. Um, I think what it does is put Newcastle as a city on the national and international map. And we've always argued that if the business community and the supporters in Newcastle get behind the club and help us to make the club uh, really one of the, the top clubs in Britain and Europe, that this goes a long way to selling the whole North East region and the number of overseas visitors that visit the area uh, and therefore spend their money in the area, I think makes a contribution to that as well. 
And so, buoyant Newcastle faced another severe test of their progress at Highbury. Inevitable comparisons between Arsenal's Ian Wright and the man looking to match his goal-scoring standards, Andy Cole. But it was Wright who was to win this personal duel. The Gunners much practiced dead ball routines, giving the England striker the first goal. Steve Bold at the near post, Wright with the neatest of headers. It was more of the same on the hour, Paul Merson and Bold again combining with Alan Smith, this time the beneficiary. Within a couple of minutes, Newcastle struck back. Peter Beardsley on target, Keegan's team winning plenty more admirers with their style, but a first defeat after four straight wins. Steve Howey had been out through injury since the first game against Spurs. He joined debutant Mike Jeffrey for the return game at White Hart Lane. United back in North London, wanting revenge for that opening day disappointment. Clark, that's a good turn. The shot blocked, could still be something on. Beardsley, over the top. Spurs lucky to survive that. Clark's corner. Keeper stayed where he is, Lee, Beardsley! Beardsley pounces on it and punishes Spurs. Can't afford to give him room. Lee got up well. Beardsley wasted no time in 1 0. Nice passing, smart move this. Anderton, that's a penalty. Watson's challenge and not much doubt about it either. Nick Barnby then. Well, that's really coolly taken. 1-1. One, one. Cole. How tight the marking is on Cole. Giving away that free kick. Quickly taken. Here's Beardsley. Slowed it down to walking pace almost. Still Beardsley. Beardsley! That is an incredible goal from Peter Beardsley. His tenth of the season and they won't come any better. They might as well have had season tickets, those defenders. And what a finish, Peter Beardsley. Newcastle swept the board in the November Carling Awards. Andy Cole won the prize for the fastest hat-trick. Coach Derek Bazakali collected Kevin Keegan's manager award. A nice touch from the boss. And Chairman Sir John represented the Toon Army, with Newcastle honoured as number one club. It was a fitting prelude to the big one against Manchester United. Eric Cantona typified the flair and style that had made the Red Devils the number one draw. Dealing with the likes of Ryan Giggs was another searching test of Newcastle's progress. The visiting champions gave the newcomers full respect, a goalless first half. Then the breakthrough. Chelskis. Down there for Inch. And Newcastle punished there. And the Tottenham and Queen's Park Rangers have come away from St James's Park with the points. Less than 20 minutes for Newcastle to prevent Manchester United from becoming the third. This is a good sort of break if they're to do it. And Cole, there's the equaliser. Andy Cole, he's never been in the game. It's what great strikers are all about. You let them alone for one minute and you pay for it. Fine cross from me. There was Cole. And that was goal 23. Keeping up with Manchester United on the pitch is one thing. But Newcastle's chief executive, Freddie Fletcher, has the job of matching the champions' commercial achievements. Newcastle are now a multi-million pound business and expanding all the time. The club shop, for example, turned over little more than £200,000 a couple of years ago. This year, takings will be nearer three and a half million. It is a team game and like any business it, it is team performances and off the pitch is every bit as important as on the pitch but you've got to get it absolutely right on the pitch to maximise off the pitch. The team shirts are the most obvious sign of United's climb up the commercial league table. Hot cakes have gone out of business since ASICS brought out the new design. You can't move in Newcastle without someone wearing the famous black and white stripes. The sales of shirts have just been phenomenal. Uh, we broke the £8 million pound record uh, Christmas week and that was for the two strips that were launched on the 1st of May, which is just phenomenal. 
Platinum club members will already know that the best rarely comes cheap. There were raised eyebrows when the club announced the price of being a super fan and enjoying an undoubted slice of the good life. But the facts speak for themselves. The fact that it's fully sold and that there's a waiting list indicates that the principle of a platinum club uh, was right and that there was a demand for it. And of course the money raised have gone a long way to uh, assist in the overall financing of the club. One of the best deals in recent times was the purchase of Peter Beardsley. Everton fans must have been wondering just why he'd been allowed to return to Tyneside. John Beresford was also looking forward to playing at Goodison Park after missing six games. The struggling Merseysiders were to become the latest victims of Newcastle's favourite 1-2. Well, the black and white shirts ahead, but that's a good ball through to Cotty. Good save, Hooper. Hooper down well there for a big man to deny Cotty. Beardsley with a touch forward for Cole. Cole, first time! Southall beaten at the near post. Cole just too quick for him. Straight on to that like lightning, had it all sized up and another goal. Hooper, big kick out. A huge kick out and Southall! Oh, he'd never have forgotten that one. And nor would Mike Hooper. Beresford. Up and under forward, Beardsley underneath it, Cole, Beardsley, now he's got some room. Still Beardsley, defenders trying to deny him, still Beardsley, he's got it, Beardsley scores against his old club. Always a sweet moment, but that was milk and honey. They backed off him, Beardsley had the patience, the skill, and he got his goal, Southall beaten. Newcastle's Christmas schedule began early with the Wednesday night match against Leeds. Little festive spirit was expected from Howard Wilkinson's Stormtroopers. But Keegan was billing the game as a six-pointer, if the aim was a realistic challenge to leaders Manchester United. Now Dean, Dean with a chance here, hit the post! Brian Dean cracked that one in, he can't come any closer, surely. Sellers, Lee, Cole is in the middle there. Trying to get away from his man. Penalty. He's given it. Garrigo on Lee. And after that, Peter Beardsley has the chance now. He saved it. That's an excellent save by Mark Beanie. And that's a major error by Peter Beardsley standards. It'll be McAllister, the dead ball specialist, looking to make Newcastle pay. And he has done. Leeds United take the lead, and it's Wallace who's done it. Bracewell, Cole on the far side. Now, can Cole conjure up something here? Cole still going, still Andy Cole. It's there, he's done it again. Andy Cole, there was Cole, good first control. And he would not let the chance go he waited he waited and he got it through that gap into the far corner it's another outstanding goal for andy cole the popular gavin peacock had been a cornerstone for newcastle back in the early stages of keegan's revival united knew their million pound sale would be waiting for them at chelsea with perhaps a point to prove peacock's new club hadn't won for three months but they took an 11th minute lead through mark steen and it proved to be the only goal of the game. All United finished with was a major rollicking from the boss, Kevin Keegan, not pleased. New Year's Day in Newcastle Sea in 1994 with club captain Brian Kilcline getting his first premiership start of the season. Also getting a first footing was Mark Robinson, sidelined throughout the whole campaign to date with a serious injury. After a couple of home draws, United had made an obvious New Year resolution. Sellers doing really well to keep the move going. And looking for Beardsley. And Cole. And Andy Cole celebrates the New Year in the only way he really knows. 
Marcelo's terrific work. Beardsley, the knockback. Cole picked his spot. Now we... Well, this could be a good bounce for Beardsley. Beardsley still going. And finishes it off. Peter Beardsley. Reward for so much running that he does in the game. And he's chalked it off. Cut out by Bracey Sellers again, another neat first time ball. Clark through for Cole. Beardsley is in the middle, but Cole might not need him. You're running out of things to say about this man's goal scoring. What does 1994 hold for this young man? Clark, a beautiful through ball. Cole has support from Beardsley. He has every right to have a go himself, expertly taken. Paul strikes again. Paul Bracewell had been the team's only ever present, an impressive record which he sadly lost at Norwich. Of course, the Canaries had a certain rural fox who was widely reported to be a Keegan target. Both teams had already firmly established reputations for flowing football, and the game was a purest delight. Weighted ball in that. Scott really marking tight on Sutton there. Fox, good turn. Bowen. Mark Bowen. 1 0 Norwich. Four minutes gone. Beardsley. Beardsley. Clark. Good return. Beardsley going all the way and scoring. Peter Beardsley, his 200th goal. Nice ball, Clark. They were thinking about a challenge and a penalty. Beardsley only thinking of a goal. Beardsley, lovely weighted ball through there to Scott Sellers. He's had a look up. Cole! Norwich survive. Great delivery there from Scott Sellers. And Cole got a foot to it. Robbie Elliott. Cole hurdling the keeper there like Colin Jackson. Look at him. 2-1. There's nothing like an FA Cup tie to get Tyneside buzzing, and a home draw against Coventry City did little to harm United's position high up the cup betting. The unmistakable figure of City's Mickey Quinn had to wait on the bench for a crack at his old club, but it was another Coventry striker who gave United an early scare. This is by far Coventry's best-looking attack so far. Wrigley on Robinson, and Wrigley still going. And Hooper! And it was finally wide. Good ball for Beardsley. Sellers, Beardsley. Against the post, and Cole! Who else but Andy Cole? Sellers. There's a little tackle there from Atherton that fell for Beardsley. Rattled his shot against the post. Thanks a lot, says Andy Cole, for his first goal in FA Cup football. Beardsley again, three times involved in this move. Lee and Beardsley again. Beardsley! Beardsley, another wonderful goal by Peter Beardsley. He was never out of that move, and he finished it off in impeccable style. Again, it was Lee's running, and Beardsley kept on going, scampered through the commentary defence, and just clipped it over the keeper, cool as you like. The Coventry game saw the end of the Gallagher's end, but on the evidence of the Lees' transformation, any tears shed would surely prove short-lived. Newcastle have rebuilt their ground as impressively as their team. The new 10,500 seat stand will complete a stunning development. It's a miniature Wembley we've got here, and with the atmosphere, etc. Everyone that comes here, everyone to visit us, just stand and look in amazement at the ground. Uh, it's a good design, it dominates the skyline in Newcastle. Hopefully we'll get towards the 40,000, but even now, with what we feel with the success in Europe, we're, we're looking into the possibility of putting another deck on top of the Milkman stand to take ourselves somewhere between 45 and 47,000, to give us a bit of flexibility for the fans, which we haven't got at this moment in time, and to, and to cater for the demand. I think the atmosphere here is tremendous, which is the fans that do that. And I think once we get the stadium finished in a full bowl effect, then the atmosphere will just be second to none.
The atmosphere at Loftus Road was pretty electric as QPR boss Jerry Francis locked horns in the dugouts with Keegan, another former England captain. But the game was down to the teams and not the managers. That's fallen short. Sellers in there. Roberts has gone charging in. Peacock trying to sort it out. Clark, 1-0. Lee Clark, only his second of the season. It had to come. Roberts, the keeper, went flying in. But he was stranded then. Clark through Peacock's legs. 1-0. David Bardsley. Good deep cross. Brought down well and finished off by Gary Penrice. 1-1. Robinson, Cole, oh, good turn, good turn again, Roberts did well, great work by Cole. Beardsley, Clark cut that one out, Beardsley's picked it up, Cole, Beardsley, that's a magnificent goal from Peter Beardsley, how can you defend against that? Cole lifted it up, Beardsley stretched first time. What a finish, that's world class, look at it. Admiration from Keegan, Beardsley, top draw. The new year saw Newcastle say goodbye to club captain Brian Kilcline. He went to Swindon. And their longest serving player Kevin Scott was reunited with Ozzy Ardiles at Spurs. Meanwhile, Alan Ball was back at his old club, Southampton. And at his shoulder, big Laurie McMenemy, the former boss now freed from the pressures of his England role. Their Save the Saints campaign started on Tyneside, and it got off to the most dramatic flyer possible. Matthew Letissier had floored United single-handed at the Dell, and now it was his corner kick that picked out Neil Madison, and the Darlington-born player headed the South Coast side into the lead after just five minutes. It was looking like one of those days. Now Robinson. Cole, Andy Cole. It's there. Andy Cole once again. Goal at number 30 and a place in the record books. It means he's the Biggest to 30 goals in yeah, Newcastle's history. Letizia, a despairing challenge from Benison, a better one from Bracewell. Robinson as well, and at about the fourth tackle, which was probably Lee Clark, they finally put a stop to Letizia's run, but it's conceded the free kick. Oh, what a goal from Letizia. He's done it again. Two crackers down at Southampton and another absolute peach to stun Newcastle. The fourth round of the FA Cup, Luton at home. But remember, the form book goes out of the window. Bracewell was in possession there. Priest now for Luton. Thorpe. This is Thorpe. What a goal there for Luton Town. Scored by Tony Thorpe. Ten minutes to go to half-time and Luton have grabbed the lead. Lee down for Bracewell. Clark. Now Beardsley. Beardsley. They've got the penalty. It was in fact Harper's tackle there. Morgan Sommer, American keeper. And here goes Beardsley. Peter Beardsley, his 15th of the season, and they won't come more important than that one. After the match, Keegan took reporters down for a pitch inspection. It was more like Tynemouth Beach and no good for United's passing game, but would Kenilworth Road be any better? Well, Newcastle never expected David Fleet's side to emerge as the cup team of the season. Just 16 minutes on the clock, and John Hartson touches the ball round Mike Cooper. The keeper's left stranded, and Luton take the lead. It was another nightmare for United's giant goalkeeper, who committed himself, but missed out. It wasn't just Keegan who was out of the seat on a pulsating night of cup football. 
It was spectacular action with Barry Venison keeping Newcastle alive with one of the clearances of the season. And in the second half, United's best chance. Peter Beardsley smacked this shot against the upright, and it was looking ominous. With 13 minutes to go, it was all over. Scott Oakes escaping Beresford's desperate lunge down the left, and then he breaks dangerously. Hooper did his best, but there was no cover as Des Linton gave Oakes the chance to finish off what he'd started. Afterwards, Keegan was big enough to applaud the planning by one of football's most experienced managers. Sir John Hall was fast becoming one of the game's most respected chairmen. He had the answer to the recent slump in United's high standards. The multimillionaire got the checkbook out, and Norwich City's rural fox, a long-term target, came north. Sir John had to hand over two and a quarter million pounds. Since he took control of the club, the chairman has dug deep. It's easy to forget where we've come from. I think it's a good time to remind people that we inherited a debt of six and a half million pounds uh, from the old uh, regime. We are spending 20 million pounds on the redevelopment of this Grand St James's Park to meet the requirements of the Taylor Report. And we've spent, Kevin's had, 13 million pounds for players. This club could not be where it is now without the board being as imaginative and as... Uh, progressive thinking as they have been, and not just on the field, off it as well. I mean, you've got to include uh, Freddie Fletcher in that, because, I mean, he's been able to keep the commercial side going that helps finance these deals, along with the chairman, obviously, and the board. And I think the players, to be fair, have helped in that as well, by agreeing to do things, sometimes way beyond the call of duty, but, hey, if you want to turn this club round and do it quickly, all hands to the pump, and, and that's what they've done. I'm a businessman, and what we've done, I'm backing a business. And backing the team, the staff and the business. You have to take risks, calculate the risks, but it's been done in the knowledge that Newcastle is a great club. It can achieve anything it wants to achieve and it's getting the results and I think you know what we've done is in a sense we've been, we've been proven right. Rule Fox was given the chance to prove himself when he made his debut after the cup disaster at Luton. So the new boy was in the team for the Premiership game at Wimbledon. But just as in the Coca-Cola Cup, ominously, there was no Andy Cole. Corner to Wimbledon. Elkins to take it. Hooper pushes it out. And in comes Robbie Earl. 1 0 Wimbledon. Nine minutes gone. Sellers are going to get this one away. Not much room for him. Straight to Warren Barton. Good ball in. And Bliss it. Good header, 2-0 Wimbledon now. Clark, Beresford. Beresford looking for an option. Going for the 1-2. And that's a penalty, surely. Vinnie Jones, not subtle at all. Beresford through, and there was the elbow, and that's a penalty. Beardsley then with a chance to get Newcastle back in this game. Segers, no chance there, it's 2-1. Nicely laid out wide for Peter Fear. Good cross, Fasinu, 3-1. What a ball knocked in there. Howie with a covering tackle, but it's a fourth, it's Holdsworth. To the final minute now, Beardsley. That's handball against Scott Fitzgerald. It looked mighty harsh, but they're having no arguments. So Beardsley with his second penalty scores, but little consolation, surely. Another bleak day at Selhurst Park for United, and keeper Mike Hooper was the man who paid the price with his first team place. So it was Pavel Cernicek who got the chance to re-establish himself as number one choice at Blackburn, recalled for the first time since September. Ewood Park was now undergoing as big a transformation as the Rovers team had been through. Nothing half-finished about manager Kenny Dalglish's determination to keep up the pressure on leaders Manchester United. This was another hard battle by a Newcastle side striving to regain its form. 
Sonacek justified his selection, a brilliant save denied Kevin Moran. Rovers were pressing for their seventh win in a row, but the big Czech keeper only gave his team temporary respite. From the corner, Steve Howey only cleared as far as David Batty. Steve May was on hand to sweep in the only goal of the game. Three defeats in a row and now Barry Venison was suspended, just when United needed all the leadership going. Newcastle faced Coventry in a fixture that had been postponed once through bad weather. The team had a new look central defensive partnership, Alan Nielsen and Matty Appleby, youth was getting its chance. But the team did have star striker Andy Cole back after two games. The referee's whistle denied him this early goal, but Coventry was soon on the receiving end. Chasing it, and Cole getting it, Cole's back. The bounce was difficult, the header back by Atherton intercepted, and Cole followed it up, followed it in, and celebrating his return to the team in the way he knows best. This is Will Fox. Fox are going to get away with some speed. Fox trying one, and Cole! Thank you very much! So much of the credit, though, to Rule Fox. He let fly, and he got a deflection there. Agrizovic couldn't hold on, and Cole thrives on that sort of chance. Still with Elliot from Morgan and just as well for Coventry but here's Beardsley Beardsley looking to go through Beardsley it's there it's a hat trick guess who Beardsley you thought he was going to go all the way through it just popped up and tucked inside Beardsley's got the ball, always a danger. Not that time though, Rennie playing it back to Brzezovic and Beardsley wins it back. Never stopped running there. Against the post. Scott Sellers must think he's never going to score. Beardsley and now Alex Maffey through the middle. Maffey. Oh, he's taken his chance. Virtually his first touch. And Maffey cashes in as well. Knew where he wanted it. Yet another perfect pass from Peter Beardsley. Maffey was away. First time he's seen the ball. And off for Grizovic and number four. It's the way to make an entrance. When United made their entrance at Hillsborough, they were wearing a one-off green strip. The two teams had suffered a colour clash problem in their first meeting. For central defender Steve Howie, who was to prove his last appearance of an injury hit season, limping off early in the second half. The game was at stalemate until an explosive last minute breakthrough by guess who? It's the Cole on a run. Tackled by Pierce. Now, what's the referee going to make of that? He's reaching for a card. It's red. Pierce off. Can Newcastle really punish Sheffield Wednesday from the free kick? Beardsley, Fox, Cole, 1-0, smash and grab in the last minute. Andy Cole again. Beardsley, Fox couldn't get a touch. Cole only needed one. He's done it again. No rest for Peter Beardsley. He was straight down to join Terry Venables' first England squad. Beardsley finally got his half-century for England. It was richly deserved recognition for his ability, his enthusiasm and his imagination. Keegan's judgment was spot on once again. Everyone said it was a lot of money for him. I think it will prove to be, and has already been, the bargain of the century. It's not just what he's done on the field for us. It's what he's shown other lads in training. It's the way he leads his life. They're all things that I want to rub off on the young players. Beardsley had a lot to prove on his return, but how does he rate his first season? I think it has been better than I expected. I think the Cups have always been disappointing, but I think overall, I think we've got to be quite pleased with what we've done so far. 
I think in the next five years, I mean, if the boss stays and obviously Terry Mack and obviously the chairman keeps plowing the money in, I think they'll go all the way. I think they'll end up winning trophies maybe in two or three years, hopefully sooner rather than later. But I think eventually it'll be as good as Liverpool were sort of maybe five years ago and then had a run like 15, 20 years. Peter Beardsley and co were now pulling in crowds away from St James's Park. The Odeon Cinema in the city centre was screening games live for Junior Magpies. What we are looking to create, and so far I think we've done that, is to create a family atmosphere. Really this show is for juniors, and if you're like, mum and dad are here almost by default. So that's where the emphasis is, and I've been amazed at some of the reaction we've had. A lot of mothers come along and say, well I've never been to a football match before, but I've thoroughly enjoyed it, and look forward to coming in the future, so now really pleased. When the movie Toon Army turned out for the Swindon game, they were treated to a box office bonanza. Peter Beardsley's penalty started a silver screen spectacular that would have impressed Steven Spielberg. Bottom club Swindon had been promoted along with Newcastle and were the only team United couldn't beat last season. But their football lives had been so different since then, and it showed. Russell in a position to knock the ball about calmly. Great run through the middle now by Lee. That's a terrific goal. Robert Lee's been waiting for that sort of goal all season. Denison. Well, the run from Cole into space. And Lee gets another one. Robert Lee makes it three. Denison tucked it forward. A terrific run into space. It lashed into there and the keeper couldn't hold on to it. All the second time after Lee had followed up. Beardsley's in there, Beardsley, you can't do that with Peter Beardsley around, just too sharp for them, far too sharp. Fox, Watson, Cole, lovely first touch there from Andy Cole, Fox let it go for Watson, Watson with the strength and the finish, whoa what a goal there for Watson, I think he enjoyed it. Lovely build-up, clever stuff, Watson, all power and purpose, and a belting finish as well. It's Newcastle United 5, Swindon Town 0. They've gone nap for the first time in the Premiership, and who is necessarily to say, with about eight minutes left to go, that's the end of it. Sadi check, oh, that one's crept in. What a little bit of uh, a mistake there by the whole Newcastle defence. Watson for Beardsley, Cole, Watson, and he's gone for a double as well, Steve Watson. Through the Sellers, flags down, Fox gets one now. Beresford waited, Sellers another one of those great positions he takes up, and Fox was hurtling in there to knock it away first time. At last, Robert Lee was off the mark. The Londoner had long ago earned the respect of the Geordie crowd, but his boyhood team was West Ham United. He was born just down the road from Upton Park. And when he went home, there weren't any split loyalties. In fact, it was quite the contrary. Robinson, Lee, got to turn his man. Cole, Lee again, got a deflection, but Lee's got the goal. The former Hammers fan comes back to East London and gets his goal. They all count. This time looking for the equaliser. Breaker's made a good run and he's got it. Tim Breaker, 1-1. Fox is out wide. Good cross. Cole! How did he do that? 2-1 Newcastle. Fox whipped in the cross, and it's the man with the golden stud. Beardsley really working for possession. Good ball to Cole, and Lee on a run. Great move this, and a fine goal by Robert Lee, his second. Well, he used to stand on these terraces. He won't have seen many better moves or finishes. Holmes with the free kick. 
Alvin Martin, 3-2, nine minutes to go, could be interesting. Into the last minute, Beardsley still going as ever, and getting round Breaker. It's loose, Cole, Maffey, 4-2, Maffey the super sub, the third time he's come off the bench and found the net, Cole, so cool there, just a little touch, and Maffey finished it off. 17-year-old Chris Holland was perfect proof that not all Keegan's transfer dealings were high profile. He paid Preston £100,000 for the teenager, and there was only modest interest. But that all changed against Ipswich Town. Newcastle looking to turn the screw. The locked in deep. Sellers getting up to it. Great save from Watson. But now it's Lee still going. Gets the post and back at the keeper. Cool. Holland. Beardsley arriving. Sellers. 1 0. Scott Sellers. The youngsters ball in. And in came Sellers to turn it into the goal. Holland. Holland with a good looking ball for Cole, no problem, Andy Cole, that's number 36 and he'll go and congratulate the youngster Chris Holland, that was a tremendous ball in from the youngster on his debut, look at that, confident, really crisply hit and Cole will have those all day long. As well as United's big spending policy, the club is also concentrating on youth development. Chris Holland was brought in, but there have been plenty of chances for local talent to take centre stage. Chris McMenemy was promoted to youth team coach and soon found his lads were challenging the senior pros for first team places. There's no doubt about it. Um, the thing that's kept the club boiling this year has been the youngsters. I mean, the, the senior pros have done the stuff, you know, every one of them. Um, but the young lads coming in to stop gap, to fill in, have not just done that, they've not been happy to do that. They've said, hold on, this is my chance and I'm going to take it. After I've had a few games in the Premiership and uh, playing in front of that crowd, you don't want to be out I and mean, you don't want to be back in the reserves, whatever you want to do. So you just got to do everything you can. Newcastle did everything they could to beat the transfer deadline and they succeeded in style. Keegan smashed the club's transfer record by signing Darren Peacock from Queen's Park Rangers for £2.7 million. The central defender had been another well-reported target and made his debut against Norwich City. The injury hit Canaries were now a shadow of the team that looked so impressive in Europe. Looked on there, Peacock getting up there. Cole! There he goes again, Andy Cole. Over it came, the nod on there, Peacock challenged for it. And Fox was there, Cole. <laughs> Didn't hesitate at all and absolutely buried that one. Cole. Beardsley. Lee through the middle. Lee. Robert Lee. Well, that's a real Robert Lee style goal. That was the typical flick, the typical first time touch of goal. Lee first to it. Whack. The ball out of defence. Gives it straight away to Wolf Fox. Needed to be a good cover there for Carter House, but Bids is in there. Beardsley, three. Peter Beardsley, don't give him room like that. There were mistakes in the middle. In came Beardsley, thanks a lot. Around the keeper, half a touch of it, back of the net. Peter Beardsley, his 20th of the season. Leeds United's Howard Wilkinson was one of the managers trying to keep pace with the frontrunners for a place in Europe. His midfield general, Gordon Strachan, cracked the referee up before the game, which Leeds had to win to bridge a widening gap at the top of the Premiership. But the home team's defence was cracked wide open before most of the Leeds side had touched the ball. Fox is out wide, skips round his man. Might start this by Newcastle. 
Pierce is in the middle, Sellers. Cole! That's his 50th goal, and that's why they call him the Predator. Anything that's loose, bodies all over the place. But Cole reacted first. Fox, that was rather careless. Straight to Brian Dean. Peacock with the challenge. Dean, Cerny check. Saved on the line by Alan Nielsen. What a clearance. Dean cannot believe that. And Nielsen only had an inch to spare. Constant pressure now from Leeds. All the time they've been coming forward. Dean, Cernicek reaches it. Two big men in action there. Dean, Cernicek, and he could reach it. Banged away there, trying to get some respite. Cole chasing it. Oh, nice work by Cole. Beardsley Square, they can finish it here. Beardsley, oh! You can hear the crowd reaction. Beardsley has put away more difficult chances. That was good work from Cole. Great skill. And Beardsley, the keeper to beat. He got a bobble. Strachan with the corner. Fairclough. He's done it. 1-1, the equaliser. Fairclough grabs a share of the points. Newsom at the near post, and Fairclough gets the goal. Dejection for Cernicek. Fairclough, the saviour. Kevin Keegan's old England teammate, Glenn Hoddle, was another young manager determined to stand by his football principles. When his Chelsea side came to St James's Park, there were high hopes of an open contest. But it turned out to be a frustrating Easter Monday. First Russian goalkeeper Dmitry Karin denied Scott Sellers. At the other end, it was Newcastle's Czech, Pavel Cernicek, who was to save brilliantly from Tony Cascarino. And it was nil-nil at half-time. By now, Hoddle's team had escaped the relegation zone and were on their way to Wembley in the FA Cup. And this time, Craig Burley found Cernicek invincible. United's target, meanwhile, remained a place in Europe, but they said goodbye to winning all three points when Karin made the save of the match from Robert Lee. As it happened, Keegan's side were fortunate to get one point when John Spencer was clear three minutes into stoppage time. Thankfully for United, he wasted the opportunity. Despite success at draws, Newcastle was still eight games unbeaten, but that run ended at Manchester City. It's a good ball by Jeffrey and Sellers. Scott Sellers gives Newcastle the lead. Mike Jeffrey across the middle and Sellers arrived on the blind side. B. Greek skipping round and getting a good cross in the Walsh. Paul Walsh, that's a fine goal and Walsh always brings quality. They signed him for a lift. And he's certainly done that all right. Sellers corner. It's only half clear to Lee. Lee, good save, Dibble. And it needed to be. Robert Lee brought that down beautifully, just opened up the room and pushed away. Beardsley takes over. Through for Cole. Cole! Oh, off the woodwork and hacked away. He can't get much closer. Just looking to nick it over the keeper. It's not a bad ball in. And Brightwell! Ian Brightwell, 2-1 City. For Peter Beardsley and United's Liverpool contingent, returning to Anfield was always going to be a special occasion. But Venison, plus Keegan and McDermott, now had their chance to bid their own farewell to the famous cop, which was just weeks away from demolition. But any sentiment evaporated at kick-off as Newcastle returned to their ruthless best. 
Beresford knocks it forward. And chest down there for Sellers. Coles dropped off, but Lee's carried on a run. Lee! 1-0! What a great start for Newcastle. And Robert Lee again. It's his sixth in eight games. Cole dropped off. Lee filled the gap. 1-0. Beardsley, trying to wriggle his way through, finds Cole, Cole, James did well. Beardsley again, really spraying it around, Sellers forward, Cole on another run, James has come out, but he couldn't finish it off that time. Beresford cuts this one out, oh, but McManaman's nipped in there, Cernicek, good save. Did well to recover there and get the cross in. And Lee and James gets down impressively. Sellers, what a great delivery! And Lee got between the defenders. Robert trying to get up there, but no problem for Cernicek. Sellers nicely controlled. Now Fox. It's a bit of space ahead of him. Fox. Through for Cole, Andy Cole, clinical, just clinical, end to end, Fox to Cole, the defenders bypassed, 2-0, Cole and Lee, the two goal scorers celebrate. No player seemed to be finishing the season stronger than Robert Lee. The second goal at Anfield was his sixth in eight games. Newcastle fans already knew about his poise and power, and now he was heading for the international stage, joining Beardsley and Cole for squad training with Terry Venables. Keegan had always said that Lee was England material. He's been a terrific signing. He helped get us up. He'll help take us where we want to go in the next two, three years. And he's settled well in the area, despite all the rumours that people have. You know, Rob Lee is, uh, is a gem and uh, his call up to the England squad I think is just a start and again he's 28 but he's a young 28 so um, he could play for England for, for a fair few number of years. I think it's everybody players dream to get an England call up. Um, I think there's a lot more players at the club who, who perhaps uh, will be in there within a year or so um, but as I say I mean everyone wants to play for England and uh, I'm no different. Irish team manager Jack Charlton took the rare chance to watch his old club when Oldham came to St James's Park. Latics boss Joe Royal could hardly expect much pleasure from the afternoon. His team were fighting for their Premiership survival and Newcastle had Europe in their sights. Now it's Beresford for Cole. Cole's got a yard. Cole! The shot in and Fox stretched got the goal. The kick taken. Jobs it in with a good effort and that's an equaliser there. Fox getting underneath it. Cole, that was a lovely touch for Lee. Cole. Cole sprinting to get clear. And Beardsley. Classic football. Finished off by Peter Beardsley. Really starting it off. Cole carrying it on, and there was Beardsley. Goal 21 for the skipper. Newcastle will be determined not to let them back into a game. It looked as though they already had one. But wait a minute, there's an opening here. Sharp, Sharp. It's another equaliser. Graham Sharp. Lee through the middle, this is the man in form, and the finish proves it. Robert Lee, what a finish to the season he's having. The seventh in nine games for Robert Lee, very much a goal in his own personal style. Sellers, Cole wanting it, Cole, here goes Cole, oh, the whole look denies him again. When's it going to come? He must feel like Brian Lara out there. When's the record coming? Well, all the attention was on Andy Cole and when he'd break that goal-scoring record. 
But within 10 minutes of the next home game against Aston Villa, there were more immediate problems. Stefan Bailek had given Villa the lead, but it prompted a Newcastle explosion, with Cole lighting his share of the fireworks. Sellers with a corner kick. Headed on by Peacock. Down for Bracewell. What a goal from Bracewell! Sellers corner. Peacock on. Half cleared. And watch Bracewell. Perfect. Sellers. Oh, super pass for Beardsley in his stride. Beardsley. Penalty. Yes. Staunton on Beardsley. So Beardsley on his 600th appearance celebrates it in style. Never in doubt. Hit fairly straight, but speak went the wrong way, and it had the power. He laid off Sellers, and he got Cole. Is this it? Cole, it has to be surely. Number 40, Andy Cole goes into the history books. Look at the grin, look at the applause. But look at the man's record. He goes past Huey Gallagher and George Robledo and he went through the Villa defence in the classic style. What a way to get a record. Oh, what a goal again. Beardsley. Beardsley, where does he get them from? Lee. Beardsley, Beardsley clips it in, Sellers coming in, it's five, Scott Sellers doesn't want to miss out, 5-1, rapturous applause, and Newcastle still in no mood to declare. Andy Cole's 40th goal of the season had taken him well and truly into Tyneside folklore. He now ranks alongside two of United's all-time greats. George Robledo fired in 39 in the 50s, equaling Huey Gallagher's benchmark of the 20s. Now Cole has earned his applause not just for this season's fabulous 40, but for his electrifying influence since the day he walked into the club. At the time he was considered Keegan's biggest gamble. Now he looks like his manager's biggest bargain. I just score as many goals as I can do, you know, the chances come to me, I put them away, but obviously when you get near the record, like the press start putting the paper that you did near this record, near that landmark or whatever, but, you know, it's never really bothered me, to be honest. Cole wants it, Cole gets it, and Cole scores! A big thank you goes out to the supporters, because without them, we might not be where we are today, you know, so obviously you've got to shake, um, shake your hand to them, you know, and wish them all the best for next season as well. Cole has taken his place in the record books in the early stages of his career. He's become an instant hero, but that's not easy. I find it very difficult, you know, because at um, the end of the day, that's not what I'm about, you know. I like, I like going to my mates and just have a laugh, but, you know, it's, I've got to come to terms with it, you know I mean, just get on with it. I think Andy Cole is just at the very start of something that could make him the most exciting player. Certainly this country's had in a long, long time, and possibly in the world, but the rest down to Andy. It's up to us as staff and players to encourage him uh, to solve any little problems that they've got at that age because, you know, the, the, it's, it's fraught with dangers out there. Um, but he's a sensible lad. And every time we've asked him to do something, asked a bit more of him, he's been capable of finding that. Cole shrugged off an injury for United's last away game of the season at Sheffield United. Keegan was looking to wrap up third place and keep hopes of European football alive. Dave Bassett's team were fighting for their lives and Nathan Blake's header was ruled over the line. In Keegan's own words, Sheffield's desperation was winning against Newcastle's aspiration. It was one of the Magpies' worst performances of the season. And Blake battled away to wrap up a 2-0 win for Sheffield with a last-minute goal. Sadly for Bassett's boys, it proved false hope. They still went down into the first division. It was an eventful last week of the season with Newcastle holding a sensational four-way press conference. 
Sir John Hall announced that Kevin Keegan had committed himself to United for the next 10 years. He'd be known as the club's first director of soccer and coaching. Kevin then gave more good news. Andy Cole would sign a new four-year contract in the summer. And there was another signing. This time a familiar face was to make a dramatic return to the club he'd once led to promotion. Arthur Cox, Keegan's old manager, was joining his former skipper to give the club a formidable backroom team. All this had been backed up by the continued promise of support from main sponsors, Newcastle Breweries. They announced a new deal with the club that should take them to the year 2000. The toast was Newcastle United and the 21st century. In brown ale, of course. Meanwhile, in Copenhagen, Arsenal had achieved the prize Newcastle had been chasing, a place in Europe next season. They'd beaten the favourites Palmer to win the European Cup Winners' Cup. Their next appearance was at St James's Park on the last Saturday of the season. United lined up in a guard of honour for the Gunners, who'd helped Newcastle's European cause. Arsenal's success would boost the campaign for an extra UEFA Cup place, and Newcastle would be favourites to get it. The fans were in carnival mood, and United had virtually secured third place ahead of George Graham's team before the match. Beardsley. Beardsley scampering his way through. Beardsley. Miller. Cole. And it's in. Goal for Newcastle. Just under two minutes gone in the second half. And St James's Park at last has a goal to celebrate. It was Beardsley who suddenly opened up the defence. Three men he took out there. Miller pushed it away the first time. Cole Dixon was there, and that was the other touch from the keeper. Beresford really streaking away. He was off like a rocket, and that's a good ball to Cole. And Beresford keeps going. This could be a marvellous goal. He could do it. He's got the penalty, though, surely. Dixon concedes the penalty, and Beresford gets the reward for an electrifying burst. Great one-two with Cole. Beresford saw the glory, Dixon saw it, and down he went. So Peter Beardsley for 2-0. Had to be. And he's put away as many spectacular goals as Peter Beardsley this season. You don't turn up a gift. But the move... Deserved it, Beardsley, full of purpose when he ran in and pulling it across and into that far corner with Miller, completely sent the wrong way. And referee Roger Dilts bring down the curtain on a memorable season here for Newcastle United. Peter Beardsley's team finish up third in the table. Tremendous applause all around the ground. Cole and Wright swapping shirts there. Beardsley, what a homecoming season it's been for the Newcastle skipper. The Newcastle third in the Premiership, the target is now Europe. The crowd demanded a lap of honour and the players didn't let them down. For some, it was a totally new experience. For others, well, they'd seen it all before, but this would still be a moment to treasure. In little more than two years, Kevin Keegan had achieved success beyond any supporter's wildest dreams. The entertainers had done it all in style, but how do you follow that? There's room to better it, to be fair. It's not as if uh, we've won anything, but uh, I think we've won the heart of the nation with the way we've played. And uh, you, you, you're going to get short odds about us winning something next year. So I'm delighted for everybody at Newcastle. You look around and we're going into the next century, hopefully.